Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Crusader Kings 2 with me, the Canarian. And we are going to actually do something this episode, and I'm going to quickly get through these. Title loss on succession, and what this means is basically that, because we don't have an heir, we're going to lose everything and that'll be the end of our game. And, <laughs> ruler, unmarried. You should get married. I should get married. Um, right, so let's marry someone, shall we? We want to marry someone, preferably... Uh, preferably with the kind of similar traits to us, with good positive traits as well. Um, who's also preferably, I would say, I mean, we could basically just marry a 16 year old. Yeah, you know, this game is pretty okay with that. I mean, we could actually, technically, if we really want to betroth ourselves to a really young person. But I'm not going to do that. I want to start spouting out babies now. Um, right. Uh, we're in the 24, 26 area, um, tell you what, we're going to do something better, we're going to go for find characters, because this is better for doing this, I think, uh, no, not married, gender, woman, uh, religion, my religion group, any culture, because it's not really going to matter, um, right, I'm going to search all, we're going to start from 16 and work our way upwards. Right. Okay, this person's got good traits. Um, let's look. It's like shopping. But for people! Um, okay, so what are our traits that we want to try and carry on? Really, I want to try and carry on powerful voice, perceptive, and ambidextrous, maybe. You know, um... Let's have a look. Or maybe just get some other ones like genius. If someone's a genius, we want to marry them. Um, calm voice. Maybe we should do that. It'd be interesting to see who gets the calm voice and who gets what. Hmm. Am I going to get that one? Master sedu Seductress? No. Um, right. Strong there. There's a strong woman. She could probably break my neck. She could with that muscular arm. Um... The tall woman, tall would be good. An attractive woman, hmm. She doesn't look very attractive in a portrait, but we'll believe what it says. It's quite funny something when you can get attractive and get someone who's really not attractive in their portrait. This is kind of, you know, in the eyes of the beholder. Here we go, here's someone that I like the look of, uh, Quick. Quick is the lesser version of genius, and it means that they're brighter and it just makes children better generally if you get them. She's got reasonably good traits. She's gregarious, uh, or gregarious if you want to pronounce it more correctly. Um, paranoid. I like paranoid because it actually helps you against intrigue. Um, ambitious, like us. We might pass it on to our children. She's charitable. A gardener. Quick. Uh, she's 16 too. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? I, um, I'm going to look for a genius though because I think that will turn out better for us. Uh, right, so let's just skim down here. Another quick, another strong. We've got an agile woman there. Um, there's someone who's deaf. Good for them. Uh, the tall woman, strong woman. There's a lot of tall and strong women. Um, there's an imposing woman. Ooh. There's a left-handed woman. Calm-voiced woman. Oh, dear me said woman too much. It's making it not a word anymore. Right. Here we go. He's a genius. Leonid. Uh, lovely name. And uh, she is a fortune builder. She's got really good statistics, actually. Uh, she's lustful. Ah, combined with our lustfulness, we'll produce so many children that no one will be able to stop us. She's brave, zealous, and proud. I like those traits. They're good traits to a degree. I mean, you know, not for everyone, but you know. So, basically, she's a genius. Okay, that's the most important trait here, though. And, you know, she's proud of her geniusness, which makes her incredibly lustful. And she's also very zealous because she reads a lot of Bibles. And she's bravely zealous in the face of unzealousness. 
And she makes money on the side. Um, and we're going to see if we can get her to be our wife. Hopefully we can. Yes! Uh, she's just a courtier, but I don't care about that prestige penalty. And I'm not going to spend ages looking for more. So we've got our wife sorted. She'll come over and uh, we'll start working at that lustfulness. Right, and we need to set ourselves an ambition. Get married. Good one to set all when you're unmarried because it gives you extra ten piety. And King William likes us. It'll make King William like us more. And we want to be on the good side of the king, which we are at the moment because he views us as a foreigner despite the fact he's a Norman in England. Anyway, ignoring that. And now we need to choose a focus. This is a life focus. This is very important. What kind of person do we want to make? Um... And the thing is, this will actually sometimes give you events and abilities, depending on which you choose. There are stewardship ones, intrigue ones, uh, martial ones, diplomacy ones, and learning ones. We're not going to do learning or stewardship at the moment. This guy's a warrior. However, I want to think I want to go for family because I want to produce as many children as possible. It gives him a bit more health, which means he'll live longer, makes him a better diplomat, and uh, I think it's an interesting way to go, rather than just all-out war. Hunting and war might turn out well, but he's already reasonably good at, you know, warfare. And this will give us an extra bit of blues, boost, boost, boost to, oh my god, my tongue, I will hurt it in a minute. Um, an extra boost to diplomacy, and it will help us pop out more children, which is the aim of the game. We're going to rule the world through sheer number of children produced. There is a negative side. To producing children we might have so many sons that you know well everyone will be fighting for what i have which will be bad but the positive side of sons is that people are normally in this game more willing to accept a male dominated marriage you know and people may have issues with that in the modern world but in this game that's good for us because we want to spread the aldagan name across the continent you know well, basically, when I switch to dynasty mode here, you'll see the major families that currently rule in the various areas. You've got Dukas in Rome, you've got the Ruk Rurikovic in Russia, and then you and, and Eastern Europe, and then you've got the uh, Salian in uh, the Holy Roman Empire, and I may be pro pronouncing these wrong, but the main thing is that I'm trying. And then you've got Capet, uh, and... Jimena, and I've definitely pronounced some of those wrong, so someone somewhere will be having an aneurysm because of that. And we want one of those names there to be Al Dagon one day, eventually. Right, so we're ready to go, let's start, let's start before I can think of something else to delay us. We're, we're going, look, the time is moving, my god people, be excited! And there goes the autosave to save us the problem of possible crashes and let's increase the speed here we go we've got a married to Leodine ah what a lovely woman graciously accepting our offer and now we've got our first choice um, we can either get prestige or money that's a horrible amount of money and we need prestige because we're in the minuses and we fulfilled the ambition to get married so we've got more press we've got not prestige but piety and importantly we need a son because we need an heir, and sons are the best heirs, because then you can just get marriages easier with them. I'm going to ignore that. I don't want to give him any more stuff. He's asking for more stuff from me, and I'm going to say no. Our knowledge of organisation has increased in uh, Hereford. Right, we're going on. And our first aim, as I say, is to take Worcester. Uh, someone's made in... Oh, yes! This guy, this guy who wants to take the Duchy of Mercia off of started an independence faction. We're not going to support that. We don't believe in independence. We believe in taking over everything. And so, part of this game, for the moment, will be a waiting game. And here we go, I told you, wounded has, the wound has gone away and now we're scarred. Which will give us prestige. And we're already getting her pregnant, I told you, I told you the lustfulness would work. So she's already pregnant, we're going to have a child soon, and it's going to be brilliant and beautiful, as you can see there. She's pregnant, this woman is with child. Okay, and our marshal, he has done so well that we're going to have ample reinforcements in Gloucester for the next two years. 
Oh, and we've already got the claim. And, and the thing is, here we go. Basically, when you manage to get a claim, and as you can see, my liege, my work in Worcester has seems to have come to fruition by bribing, cajoling, extorting, threatening, and forging documents. I have managed to fabricate a claim on the Prince Bishopric of Worcester, presently held by Prince Bishop Wollstone of Worcester. I leave it up to you whether to use it or not. Your humble Chancellor, Bailiff Lancelin of Bristol. We're going to use it. And uh, if you don't use it, you gain tempiety, you know. The church thinks better of you. But if you do use it, you lose a lot of money, a lot of prestige, but you get a strong claim, and the person who has it currently hates you. All good things. Well, not really, but you know, it's way worth it, and we're going to pause immediately to declare war. And I think, as I suspected, good King William has bestowed upon his loyal servants some lands so these these guys who've just got their newly awarded counties Hugh of Warwick Radolf of Stafford and Drogo of Shrewsbury are going to lose their titles to us soon hopefully right and let's declare war on Prince Bishop Wolfson of Worcester to claim Worcester and let's raise our forces and immediately send them in the army of Count John and the army of Serdic. And there we go, there's their army. Here we go. And here we go, you've got three stages of uh, combat. Um, oh. Three stages of combat, and these are basically, first of all, skirmishing, and then you've got melee, and then you've got the pursue. And the pursue happens when the enemies are retreating. And... Um, You've got the various different units here. You've got your light infantry, your pikemen, your archers, your heavy infantry, your light cavalry, and your heavy cavalry. And they basically all have their own stats which favour them in certain situations. Normally it's best to be on the defensive though, I find. Right, and here we go. We can, you see an enemy cut off, soldier cut off from the others and it's clear they must be high born noble. So we're going to charge down the line at that dude and I think we might actually get a chance to try and fight him. But actually we've made them retreat already, so... There'll be no fighting here. Um, and we've already, as you can see here, down here in the bottom right corner by the map, we've already managed to uh, completely make him concede. So we're going to just basically enforce our demands. And now we are the Count of Worcester. And our demence size is one away from cap. And it's technically the wrong type of holding because, you know, we're supposed to give it to a, pre uh, a priest. But we don't have any way to hold on to it if we grant it to anyone else. So we're going to hold on to it for the moment until we've got our own duchy. And, oh. There are raiders in Gloucester. We're going to kill them. Right. March the army south. Kill off of these raiders. Ah, charging across the grounds again. And these... Minor messages, let's get rid of those. Oh my god, so many minor messages. And we won the Siege of Gloucester, and we won the Battle of Bristol. And we sent them running away with tail between their legs. Oh, we had a, another army here that I forgot about. Right, let's stand down our force because they cost money to keep up. Right. Okay, that was successful. We've already achieved... Oh, let's get rid of these messages. Oh, we've already achieved our goal of getting Worcester, so let's move our Chancellor on and start taking over. Um, oh, we actually need to consider this for a second. Okay. Right, so how many allies do these guys have? And this is important because the more allies they have, the more threat they are. So Stafford, this guy has lots of allies. Um, yeah, and they're not all pointless allies, so... Uh, we're going to go for Shrewsbury or Warwick. Which one looks the best? Shrewsbury. So we're going to take Shrewsbury first. Right. Okay, here we go. We've got another choice. Right. Normally I just say, uh, I rule little in the county of Hereford. Because he wants, basically, this guy wants to be our new spy master. And that normally means he's a better spy master. Um... Mm, let's give Bishop Oderic a chance. Let's just delay that effectively. Okay, and what's going on now? Oh, we're at war with Alba or Scotland, and we've had a son. Good news all at once. 
and here we can name him and we're going to give him good good names uh, we're going to call him Goddard and the reason we're going to call him Goddard and this is an amazing name I know basically we're taking Edward but instead of war uh, you know instead of Ed we're going to give him God because one of the old names I remember from basically just uh, one of the old names was Oswin and Oswald and you know all those names and Oz was actually an old name for God and so we're gonna do it here we're gonna continue the uh, continue the tradition so Goddard our son he inherited our powerful voice he's not intelligent like his mother not a genius but he can shout orders already the baby's just screaming screaming orders at the nurses and everything and this smoke here you see that means there's plague so uh, that's unfortunate and it's consumption which is uh, the old-fashioned name for tuberculosis hopefully we won't get it oh we need to give ourselves a new ambition right I want to have a daughter now because you've got to have a good mixture of sons and daughters you know daughters help you make alliances sons help you do other things ah oh, the uh, tuberculosis has spread to Hereford and our knowledge of several things have increased right just need to hold on in there to get Shrewsbury okay minor message okay some people are already contracting consumption Ah, wife has got... Oh, crap. Our wife has got consumption. Oh, shit. Well, hopefully she won't die. Ah. So... Oh, dear. This is not good. Ah, uh, bailiff just died of consumption. Ah, uh, sorry. Not bailiff. Our bally, which is basically our steward. Let's make our wife... Our, uh... Steward. Hopefully she won't die. Because if our wife dies, that's just going to be bad. Um, Sodic is a better spy master. Hmm. Does he like us? I'm just going to... It's not that much of a difference. It's not enough of a difference to really be, you know, valid to replace. Oh dear, she's got consumption. Uh... Okay, we want our wife to get better. Is there anything I can actually do to make her better, I wonder? Let me think. Um, it'd be an intrigue in the decisions. Um, oh, no, there's nothing I don't think I can do. I don't think I can do anything, so... Hey, we'll, we'll hold a, a summer fair to cheer us, to cheer us up. Okay, so people are getting consumption. Oh my god. I hate plagues. Okay, she's pregnant and she's severely ill with tuberculosis. Good. It's good to know that we're producing babies despite the fact that she's severely ill. Man, that's an age difference, 11 years. Anyway. To be honest, I don't have much of a different uh, issue with people who have, you know, well, I don't have any issue with people who have a massive age difference in their relationship. It's a relationship. You should be having a relationship based on who they are, not, you know, how old they are. Anyway, the summer fair's archery contest went very well. The clout and the space around it was filled with aloes. Some of them hit the bullseye. Some of them had missed the clout altogether. The winner was a modest man who disappeared rather quickly after he collected his prize. Hmm. And say, so this is suspicious, and then we become paranoid. Marshal, find that man and arrest him. And then we arrest him and the peasants get incredibly upset. And we can say, good archer, find that man. Um, oh, no, not find that man, just good archer that man. I only say good archer, yeah. Why be suspicious? Hmm, there's a peasant revolt. But it's in a place that we don't really care about. And I'm not going to waste my soldiers on it. It's the king's job. Um, anyway, right. Now, when the Alleman asked for permission for a summer fair, I would never have guessed I would regret that. After a pie powder court held in front of my own bailiff, they sentenced one of my vassals 
to being drawn in a tumbler across the town square. I can't believe their imprudence. Which I think... I don't know, it just makes my my vassal very angry at me. Or I can say, they will regret this. Which will make, I don't like either of these. I'm gonna make my vassal upset. Let's not upset the people, okay? Count John is gonna be a man of the people to a degree. Doesn't like upsetting them. Okay, we're gonna upset the peasants anyway, so you know. Okay, so we, we gained uh, 10 prestige from that. That was good. Does our wife... She still has consumption. Not good, she still has a baby. It'd be bad to lose our wife. Oh, look, there we go. The rebels are being dealt with, with the, by the king's men. Right. Oh, we're running over time. So I'll finish up here. So what's happened this episode? We've tooken... Uh, tooken? I am having an English failure here. We've taken Worcester from our foes, expanded our realm therefore. We've got our wife, we've had our son, Goddard. We've secured therefore our family at the moment. We're going to try and have more children. Our wife has got tuberculosis and now we're waiting for the plague to subside and hoping to make more advancements into Shrewsbury. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed it. Like, favourite, comment, subscribe, all of the various actions that you may be possibly able to do on YouTube, and yeah, I'll see you next time.